Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier here in the CUBE's Palo Alto studio. We're here with Jonathan Wynn, who's with uh, uh, formerly Verizon, now with Fortinet. Um, what's your title? Uh, Vice President of Strategy. Vice President of Strategy. But you're really, I would say, more of a security guru. You had notably were the author of the Verizon Data Breach Investigative Report. Great report, yeah. it really has been an industry standard. Congratulations, great to have you here. Thanks, it was, it was great. Uh, 16 years at Verizon uh, in the security business. Uh, ran that data breach investigations team. So yeah, that was, that was a, a great honor yeah. in my career. Yeah. So you called strategy because they don't want you the word cyber. Uh, security in your title on LinkedIn in case they spearfish you, is that right? No. <laughs> you, you know, ha having started my career as a U.S. Foreign Service <laughs> officer, uh, as, as a victim of the OPM data breach, the, everything that about me is, is out there. Yeah. I live in that perfect universe about how do you defend your identity when everything about you has been compromised to yeah. begin with. So many stories, I had a, a CUBE guest talk about LinkedIn and the tactics involved in spearfishing and, and, and the efforts that people go in to attack that critical uh, resource that's inside a perimeter. This is a big problem. This is the problem with cyber uh, warfare and security and, and crime. Yes. Talk about that dynamic, because this is, I mean, we always talk about the cloud change the perimeter, but of course, sure. more than ever, this is really critical. So fundamentally, as, as we begin going into digital transformation and notions about where data is today and the nature of computing, uh, so everything has, has changed and the notion of a traditional perimeter has changed as well. So I'm, I'm going to borrow a great analogy from my friend Ed, Ed Amoroso, and he said, look, let's pretend this is your traditional enterprise network, and all your assets are in there, and we all agree that that perimeter firewall is being probed every day by nation state actors, organized criminal syndicates, hacktivists, anybody. Everyone's probing that environment. It's also dissolving because you've got staffers inside there using shadow IT, so they're opening up that firewall as well. Then you've got applications and portals that need to be accessed by your stakeholders, your vendors, your customers. And so that traditional wall is gradually eroding, but yet that's where all of our data is, right? And against this environment, you've got this group, this unstoppable force, as Ed calls it. These nation state actors, these organized crime, these hacktivist groups, all highly sophisticated, and we all agree that with time and effort, they can all penetrate that traditional perimeter. We know that because that's why we hire pen testers and red teamers to demonstrate how to get into that network and how to protect that. So if that's the case, that we have this force and they're going to break in eventually, why are we still spending all of our time and effort to defend this traditional perimeter that's highly vulnerable? Well, the answer is, of course, that we need to distribute these workloads in, into multiple clouds, into multi-hybrid cloud solutions. The challenge has been, well, how do you do that with, it, with enough control and, and visibility and detection as you would have in a traditional perimeter? Because a lot of folks just simply don't trust yeah. that type of deployment. And it's the heart of... That's yeah. the state of the art. I mean, that's the state of the art problem. How to deal with the complexity yeah. of IT as, with digital transformation as it becomes so complicated and so important at the same time. Yet cloud is also on the horizon, it's here. We see the results of Amazon Web Services, see what Azure's doing at Google, et cetera, et cetera. And some companies are building their own cloud. So you have this new model with cloud computing, data-driven applications, and it's complex. But does that change the security paradigm? How does the complexity play into it? Absolutely, so complexity has always been the enemy of security. And at Fortinet, what we essentially do is that we help companies understand and manage complexity to manage risk. So complexity is only going to increase. So digital transformation, the widespread adoption of digital technologies to enable exponential and explosive productivity growth, right? Societal level changes, right? Also massively expand the interconnected nature of our society. More and more interconnections, accelerated cycles across the board, greater levels of complexity. The, the challenge is going to be not about whether you're moving into the cloud, everyone is going to move into the cloud. That is the basis of computing moving next. So in the Australian government, the US government, all the agencies have a cloud first migration initiative. It's not about whether, it's not about, it's really about when. So how do, how do you move forward with moving your computing, your workloads into the cloud? It, it, in many ways it goes back to fundamentals about risk management. It's about understanding your users and your mm -hmm. systems, the criticality, the, the applications they're associated with, and understanding what can you move into the cloud? And well, what do you keep on-prem uh, in a private yeah. cloud, as it were? I want to ask you uh, more about global, yeah. more about cyber security, but first, let's take a step back and set the table. What is the, the holistic and the general trend in, in cyber security today? I mean, what's, the, what is the, what's going on in the landscape, and what are the core problems people are optimizing? For. Sure, so across my 20 odd years in, in cyber, what we've seen consistently has been the acceleration of the volume, the complexity, and, and the variety of cyber threats. So 10 years ago, 
uh, 2007 or so, there were about 500 threat vectors. You know, today we're north of 5,000. Uh, and back at that point, there were maybe 200 vendors. Today we're north of 5,000 vendors. Uh, there was less than a billion dollars of cybersecurity spend. Today we're north of 80 billion dollars of spend. And yet the same challenges pervade. And what's happening now, they're only becoming more accelerated. So in the threat environment, the criminal environment, the nation state threat actors, they're all becoming more sophisticated. They're all sharing information. They're sharing uh, TTP and they're sharing it on a very highly effective marketplace. The, the dark web cybercrime marketplace uh, is an effective mechanism on sharing information, of matching threat actors to targets. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the frequency, the variety, the intelligence of attacks, automated ransomware attacks is only going to grow. And across the board, all of us on, on, on this side of the fence, our challenge is, is going to be how do we effectively address security at speed and scale? And that's the key. Because you can affect security very well in very discrete systems, networks, facilities. But how do you do it from the IoT edge? from the home area network, the vehicle area network, the, ve mm. the personal area network, to the enterprise network, to then to a hybrid cloud, mm. a highly distributed ecosystem. And how do you have visibility and scale across that when the interval of detection between the detonation of malware to the point of irrecoverable damage is in, uh, in seconds? So tons of attack vectors, but also I would add to, to the complicate the situation further is the surface area. You mentioned IOT. Yeah. We've seen examples of IOT increasing yeah. uh, more, more avenues in, yeah. okay? So you got more surface area, more attack vectors with technology, malware is one, we've seen that in ransomware certainly, right. number one. But it's not just for financial gain, it's also there's terrorism involved. Absolutely. So it's not just financial services get the cash uh, and embarrass a company, yeah. it's I want to take down that power plant. Sure. So is there a common thread because you can, I mean, every vertical is going to have their own, or industry industries have their own kind of situation contextually. But is there a common thread across the industries that cybersecurity is addressing? Is there, is there a baseline that, that you guys are attacking and that, you, that problems are being solved? Can you, can you sure. talk about that? So at the heart of that is a convergence of operational technologies and information technology. Operational technologies were never designed to be IP enabled. They were air gap, never designed to be integrated and interconnected with information technology systems. The challenge has been, as you said, is that as you go through digital transformation, become more interconnected, you know, how do you understand when a thermostat has gone offline or a conveyor belt has gone offline or a furnace is going out of control? How do you understand that the HVAC system for the operating uh, theater, the surgery theater, uh, is operating properly? Now we have this notion of functional safety and you have to marry that with cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, and so in many ways, the traditional approaches are still relevant today. Understanding what systems you have, the users that, are, that use them, and what's happening uh, in that, and to detect those anomalies and to mitigate that in a timely fashion. You know, those same themes are still relevant. It's just that they're much, much larger now. Let's get back to the perimeter erosion uh, issue yeah. because one of the things that we're seeing on theCUBE is digital transformation is out there. Right. And that's, that's kicked around as a buzzword, it's out there, but it certainly is relevant. Yeah. People are transforming to a digital business. Peter Burr is head of research at Wikibon, talked about this all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's a lot that involves IT business process, putting data to work, all that good stuff, transforming the business, drop, drive revenue. But security is more coarse, and, and sometimes it's, it's, we're seeing it being unbundled from IT and reporting directly up to the, either the board level or yeah. C level. So, that being said, how do you solve this? I'm a digital transformation candidate, I'm yeah. doing it. Right. But I got, I'm mindful of security all the time. How do I solve the security problem, cybersecurity problem? Just prevention, other things, What what's, the formula. Okay, so at the heart of cybersecurity is risk management. So digital transformation is, is the, the use of digital technologies to drive exponential productivity gains across the board. And it's about data-driven decision-making versus intuitive-led human decision-making. So that the heart of digital transformation is making sure that the business leaders have their timely information to make decisions in a much more timely fashion so that you have better business outcomes and better quality of life, safety if you will. And so the challenge is about how do you actually enable digital transformation, it comes down to trust. And so again, across the, the pillars of digital transformation, mm -hmm. and they are first um, IoT, these devices that are connected to collect, share information, to make decisions. The sheer volume of data, the zettabytes of data that will be generated in the process of these transactions. 
then you have ubiquitous access and you're going to have 5G. You have this notion of centralized and distributed computing. How will you enable those decisions to be made across that board? And then, and then how do you secure all that? And so at the heart of this is the ability to have automated, and that's key, automated deep visibility and control across an ecosystem. So you've got to be able to understand at machine speed what is happening. How do I do that? What do I do? Do I buy a box? Do I, is it a mindset? Is it everything? What's the, how do I solve sure. How do I stop so the cyber attacks? You need a, a framework of automated devices that are integrated. So a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need to have the points across this ecosystem where you can detect and so whether that is a firewall on that IoT edge or in the home or that's an internally segmented firewall across the enterprise network into the hybrid cloud. You're also going to need to have intelligence and by intelligence I mean you're going to need a partner who has a global infrastructure of telem telemetry to understand what's happening in real time in the wild and once you collect yeah. that data you're going to need to have intelligence analysts, researchers that can put into context what that data means, because data doesn't become information on its own. You actively have to have someone analyze that. So you have to have a team at Fortinet, we have hundreds of people who do just that. And once you have the intelligence, you've got to have a way of utilizing it, right? And so then you've got a way of orchestrating that intelligence into that large framework of integrated devices so you can act. And in order to do that, effectively, you have to do that at machine speed. And that's what I mean by speed and scale. The big challenge about security is the ability to have deep visibility and control at speed, at machine speed, and at scale from that IoT edge yeah. way across into the cloud. Scale's interesting, so I want to ask you about the Fortinet. How are you guys at Fortinet solving this problem for customers? Because you have to, is it uh, the totality of the offering? Is it some here, technology here? And again, you got 5,000 attack vectors, you mentioned that earlier, and you, can, you did the defense report at Verizon and your former job, so you kind of know the landscape. What does Fortinet do? What do you guys, how do you solve that problem? Right. So, from day one, every CISO has been trying to build a fabric. We didn't call it that. But from my first packet filtering firewall to my first stateful firewall, then I deployed intrusion detection systems, and when all that generated far more lists I can manage, I deployed an SEM. And then I went to intrusion prevention. Okay. And then I had to look at logs, and so I went to an SIEM. And when that didn't work, I deployed sandboxing, which was called dynamic malware inspection back in the day. <laughs> and then when that didn't work, I had to go to analytics. And then I had to bring in third-party technology, third-party intelligence feeds, and all along I hoped I was able to make those firewalls, those defense sensors, that platform integrated with intelligence, work somehow to detect the attack and mitigate that in real time. Now what we essentially do in the Fortinet security fabric is we reduce that complexity. Yeah. You know, we bring that level of automation. And by the way, you're ad hoc, you're reacting in that mode. You're just, you know, I got to do this, I got to add that to it. So it's almost like sprawling, software sprawl. You're just throwing solutions at the wall. Right, and a lot of that time, you know, no one knows if, it, if the devices are properly configured. No one has actually done the third party technology integration. No one has actually met the requirements that were deployed three years ago, the requirements today, mm -hmm. and the requirements three years from now. Yep. And so that's a huge level of complexity. And I think at the heart of that complexity, that's reflected in the fact that we're missing the basic elements in security across the day. The, the reason the large data attacks and the data breaches didn't come because of advanced malware. They didn't happen with nation state threats. These were known vulnerabilities. The patches existed. They weren't patched. In my experience, 80% of all the attacks could be mitigated through simple to intermediate controls. And then that's- Deploying the patches, doing the job. Complexity. Patch management is, is, sounds easy, it's hard. You know, you, some applications, there is no patch available. You can't take things offline. You have to have virtual patches. There are unintended consequences. Uh, and, and there are a lot of things that, that don't happen. There's the handoff between the IT team and the security team, and it adds complexity. And, and if you think about this, mm -hmm. if our current teams are so overwhelmed that they cannot mitigate known attacks, uh, exploits against known vulnerabilities, how are they going to be able to grapple with the complexity of managing zettabytes of data with an ecosystem that spans around the world that operates in milliseconds, where now it's not just digital issues, it's health, safety, physical security. Mm -hmm. How can we trust a connected vehicle that is secure or not? Talk about the dynamic between um, machines and humans, because you mentioned patches, and this is, yeah. you can argue it's a human mistake, but also you mentioned automation earlier. Right. The balance between automation using machines and humans, because prevention and risk management seem to be the axis uh, of, of the practice. It used to be all prevention, mm -hmm. now it's a lot more risk management. There's still a human component yeah. in here. 
How are you guys um, talking about that and how is that rendering itself as a value proposition for customers? Sure, so, so humans are the essence, both the, the challenge. Um, in so many cases, we have faulty passwords, we have bad hygiene. Uh, that's why security awareness trading is, is so critical, right? Because humans are part of the problem on one end. On the other end, within the SOC, humans are grappling with huge amounts of data and trying to understand what is malicious, what needs to be mitigated, and then prioritizing that. For us, it's about helping the complexity, reduce the complexity of that challenge and helping automate those areas that should be automated so the humans can act better, faster, as it were. Here's Jonathan Nguyen with uh, Fortinet. I want to ask you about the ecosystem you mentioned that earlier and also the role of CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, and CIO, essentially the executives in charge of, of security. So you have executives in charge of the risk management, <laughs> don't get hacked, don't get, don't get breached, and also the ecosystem of partners. So you have a very interesting environment right now where people are sharing information, you mentioned that earlier as well. So you got the ecosystem of sharing, and you have executives in charge of running their businesses effectively and not to have security breaches happen. What's happening, what are they working on? What are the key things that uh, chief security officers are working on and with CIOs? What's, what specifics on their, on their plate? And what's the ecosystem doing around that too? Sure, so digital transformation dominates all discussions today. And every CISO has two masters. They have a productivity master, which is always the business side of the house, and they have a security master, which is ensuring that reasonable level of security in the advent and managing risk, right? And that's the challenge, how do you balance, how do you balance that? So across the board, CISOs are being challenged to make sure that the applications, those di digital transformation initiatives are actually occurring. Yet at the same time, in the advent of, 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 ha of, what, as of a data breach, understanding the risk and managing the risk, how do you tell your board of directors, your governments, that that you're not only compliant, but that you have handled risk to a reasonable level of assurance. And, and that means, in, in my opinion, across my experience, you've got to be able to demonstrate a couple of things. One, you have identified and adopted with third-party implementation and attestation of recommended best practices and controls. Second, you've implemented and used yeah. best-in-class products and technologies like Fortinet, products that have gone through clearances, gone through common criteria, where things are properly certified, and that, that's how you demonstrate a reasonable level. It's, it's really about risk management, understanding what level of risk you'll tolerate, what level of risk you'll mitigate, and what level of risk you're going to transfer. And, and I think that's the discussion at the board level today. So more, make people feel comfortable, but also have a partner that could actually do the heavy lifting on new things, because there's always going to be a new attack vector out there. Absolutely, so I, I think the, the key <laughs> to it is understanding what you're really good at. And so the, one of the questions I ask every CISO is that when you look at technology, what, what is that your organization is really good at? Is it using technology, operationalizing that experience? Or is it really about ensuring that that firewall is integrated with your SIM, that the SIM works and trying to create your own threat intelligence? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we do better than anybody else is that we, we reduce the level of complexity of that, allowing our clients mm -hmm. to really focus on, on providing security, using yeah. best-in-class technologies to do that. Yeah. John, the final question, 2018, what's your outlook for the year for CISOs and, and companies with cyber right now? I think it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a focus back on basics um, because before we take this next evolutionary leap in terms of cyber and computing and the digital nature of our society, we've got to get the basics done right. And I think the way Fortinet's going, our ability to use the fabric to help manage risk and reduce risk is going to be the path forward. It's theCUBE bringing you uh, commentary and coverage of cybersecurity, of course, here in our Palo Alto studio. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.